I still do not feel very sisterly towards you. The one would think I that to say. Why do you think I was given second bidding? After all, Libby, I did the big things first. Mary, Academy statue. First, yes. First still counts. Chronological order, I suppose. I am only 15 months younger. 15 months? Dear sister, does that really matter at this point? Probably not, but being younger has its advantages. <laughs> not 15 months, oh, 15 years, perhaps. Even 15 years at our age, well, that wouldn't help very much. Do you feel fortunate to have made it to 97? I don't know. Yes, I think I am grateful, but it's not our world anymore, is it? There was a song many years ago that had the lyric, and when the world is through with us, I think the world has been through with us for a very long time. And I think our television appearances, or public ones, are meant to throw us old gals a bone, a bone of appreciation for how things were in that golden age in Hollywood. Well, we both know that all that glitters. Whatever fans we had have forgotten us. Oh, practically all the fans we had are dead or senile. There must be some left. After all, we were invited here. People must be interested. Yes, thanks to that marvelous non-stop movie channel. Oh, and that marvelous young man and my good friend who knew more about movies than L.B. Mayer. Oh, we'll stay young forever, on film anyway. Yes, that's true. But this interview is being done by the best in the business, Top Notch. She does these specials, they are called, and they're very popular with audiences. We should be honored. <gasps> she should be honored! <laughs> well, it's advertised everywhere. We're making news, Lily. Actress sisters make first TV appearance together. Are we the first? Really? Well, there are other actress sisters. You just love that word first, don't you? You can't seem to let it go, Henry. If it makes you feel better, your name is appearing first in the ads. We're being paid a tiny fortune for this. I suppose at our age, the money doesn't really matter. I think we were both curious. Do you suppose they will give us a script? This isn't a picture, Libby. They're just going to ask us some questions. An interview about our experiences in the movies. Hmm. Times have changed, Joe. No one cares about our experiences. All they care about is the juicy gossip, or the behind the scenes, or rather, under the sheets. What can we tell them about that? We still clear of that kind of nonsense. After all, I'm Joan Fontaine, not Joan Crawford. But you can tell me a few things, I'm sure. Whatever do you mean? Errol? Ah, Errol. Oh, an extraordinarily handsome, rugged, virile man. Oh, yes, he was. And a fine actor, too. We did eight pictures together. 
I'm aware. In my mind, Harold was the quintessential Robin Hood. I agree. We agree on something. As with some beautiful people, his challenge was overlooked. I think his work in Elizabeth and Essex was quite fine. Yes, it was. Yours wasn't overlooked. My what? Your beauty. Oh, thank you, dear sister. And I think you have become quite a handsome actress and more yourself. <laughs> You've never thought of me in those terms. You said that when you die, you would leave me all your beauty because I never had any. Oh, did I say that? How wretched of me. <laughs> Things change, we change. But what was important those many years ago? Well, perhaps you were right. I was given the prestigious statue for playing plain girl. You never played a plain girl. Oh, you're forgetting Melanie. Everybody wanted Scarlet, but I knew Melanie was the great part. If Selznick hadn't butchered that book, oh, Melanie would have given Scarlet a run for her money. Oh, well, ancient history. <laughs> oh, and you're forgetting Catherine. She was very plain. Catherine. Oh, yes, the heiress. Very fortunate to have worked with Monty Clift. I never quite understood the method type of acting. You had Olivier, Grant, and Wales to be played for. Not too bad, don't you think? Yes, but you were smart. Everyone knew that. You had gumption. You took on the studio and changed the contract system forever. I suppose that's true. We made those men rich, and they treated us like indentured servants. Oh, it could not go on that way. Do you think we should have brought our Oscars to show the audience? I think the audience knows what an Oscar looks like. Besides, it's much too heavy to carry. Yes, and I would have had to carry <laughs> I am aware. We hold the record for Oscar-winning sisters. It doesn't matter. I'm sure it doesn't matter to you anymore that I won mine first. Of course not. <laughs> and I'm certain it doesn't matter to you that I have two. <laughs> they are heavy, are they? I hold a record myself, you know. What record is that, dear? You know perfectly well that I'm the only Hitchcock blind to have won the statue. Since he's dead, the record will stand in perpetuity. Yes, but I think you should have won for Rebecca. Oh, thank you, dear. But that would have extended our feud by a year. <laughs> <laughs> How did we start this silly conversation? Errol. Errol, oh, beautiful man. As he admitted in his autobiography, wicked. He loved you. He truly did. He loved all women. In fact, he even liked, well, <laughs> he was a scoundrel in many ways. But I won't tell tales out of school. What's the difference now? Libby, you can make up anything you want. That rugged, virile man would be over 100 today. Yes, he died very young, 50. But it was his choice. He died the way he lived, fast and free. Enviable, but not the life for me. Yes, and we're still here. How long do you think we'll have to wait? I don't know, but I will say they do put out quite a spread. Thank heaven we don't have to worry about our weight anymore. <laughs> Remember how we starved ourselves back then? Not really. I never gained weight no matter what I ate. <laughs> how fortunate for you. I'm not hungry. Just curious. About how we'd get on, trapped in this room together? Yes, of course. But I was just thinking of all the 
great stars and dignitaries and politicians that have been in this room. Such a lovely shade of yellow. Mm -hmm. Loud, glorious. Didn't name the walls after the color. Mm -hmm. I know that. But we're not nervous, are we? Not in the least. We're old pros. Oh, we're not frightened by anything, but we never turn green. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't stage fright that turned them green. Maybe it was in me. The theory. A mixture of too much food and a bit of fright. Caught on the stomach. Then tried to be entertaining. That would make anyone green. Well, I think a little bit of food deprivation and a dash of stage fright brings out the best in performers. Sydney Greenstreet would disagree. <gasps> Mr. Greenstreet is dead, and he never won an Oscar. I hope they call us soon, and I hope she'll keep the conversation light. Oh, she won't. She's known for her famous tough and embarrassing questions. She once asked a young actor if the rumors about his ambiguous sexuality were true. In our time, they would have never asked that. And if someone even had an inkling about an actor, the answer would be a family spread in Photo Play magazine showing his perfectly happy heterosexual life. <laughs> I think some things are best left alone. It's okay to keep secrets. Asked us. They talked about us, didn't they? <laughs> People just want the juicy gossip. That hasn't changed. We should give them something to talk about. Errol again. No. Revealed. The two Oscar winning actress sisters tell all. They weren't beauty. They didn't hate each other. They were in love with each other. <gasps> oh my! <laughs> Oh, don't talk like that. And I have never hated you. Yes, you did. I may be the first, as you say, in some things, but you wanted to be the only. And Mother agreed with you. She didn't like me at all. She was probably shocked to find herself pregnant again so soon. I never even had my own clothes as a child. She gave me yours. Yes, and... I knew. I took the scissors to them. It was childish, but I could not abide your wearing my dresses. <laughs> they hung differently on you. Ever did me? Well, they looked better on me. You turned the prettiest frock drab. I suppose de Havilland looked better on you, too. You did all right with the name you chose. Joan de Beaucaire de Havilland was my name, my birthright. Mother forbade me to use my own name. She was protecting me. Pup, of course. She liked you best. No, I think she was protecting my image. If you had failed as an actress using the name, the public would have been confused as to who was the success and who was the failure. You would have brought us both ruin. But I didn't fail, did I? The gypsy was right. As I said, you did all right with the name Fontaine. You could have taken my hand, or looked my way, or even smiled at me. I was offering you my sincerest congratulations. What? At the ceremony in 1942. <laughs> oh, that. I suppose I can tell you the truth now. Yes. I was afraid that if I approached you, you would have greeted me with scissors in hand, ready to cut up my dress in front of the entire Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. But don't be silly. You weren't wearing my dress. You were jealous. Admit it. We were in a cutthroat business. Everybody's jealous of other people's success. It's beastly, but it's true. You certainly got even with me. By winning two? Well, perhaps. But more than that. Does it really matter? You brought it up. 
I did not. You started this with bringing up 1942. It's the math assistant. Can't remember your lines. My memory is as clear as gloss. I do wish they would call us to go on. This is most disconcerting. I do believe that this is the longest we have ever been in a room together, and this is the most we've ever had to say to each other. Do you think they're filming us? What if the television station meant this as a catharsis or a kind of therapy for us? If that's the case, we could have gone to that other station and chatted with that nice bald doctor with the moustache. He makes everyone cry. Well, so does this interviewer. I don't know. I think we're being watched somehow. <laughs> Maybe it's mother shocked that we are here together. Maybe it is mother watching over us. She wouldn't be watching over me. She might be keeping an eye on me, ready to strike me with lightning if I do or say anything to you that she would disapprove of. Oh, how dramatic! And how you exaggerate! You know it's true. Sister dear, my memory is every bit as good as yours. Oh, thank heavens that settled. Our brains are still working. It's just no talking to you. No, dear, not for decades. If you took up for me, Mother would have given me a chance. I was looking out for her, you remember? She was just too old to have surgery, but she listened to you. The gospel, according to Olivia. Mother was strong. We were strong. We survived. You once said we were not passive people. Oh, how true. It wasn't just mother. It seemed that you had your hand in my life. You were always there. Somewhere. Silently hovering, haunting me. Thousands of miles away. You were always there. Only in your mind. <laughs> I hardly gave you a thought. But you must have given me some thought. You spent a lot of time with my daughters. They must have reminded you of me, no? You should have given them a chance. You were so angry at them for loving me. You were angry at Mother for loving me. Oh, you were just angry. I had every right to be angry. Perhaps I was fair. It happens in every family. But I think you were the lucky one. From the start, you had a built-in motivator. What motivator was that? The need to best me. I wasn't like you. I didn't have your obsessive drive to succeed. No, not to succeed, but to shell me up. Oh, it would have been the same if we had been lady plumbers. You <laughs> had this obsessive need for approval. If not from mother, then from the public. You succeeded, Joan. Put it to rest. You're a clever one, Lily, but you don't fool me one bit. You'll go to your grave knowing that I was given the Oscar first, and everything that followed was from <coughs> that night in 1942. Lily, Olivia. words of Robert Anderson. Years from now, when you speak of this, you will. Be kind. chair again. The chair? No, I'm in the green room of a top television station and we were... I don't understand. Where did she go? Who? Never mind, dear. 
I guess I left the lights on in the house, too. Did you get the mail, dear? No, it's too early for the mail. Miss D, there's a reporter out front, and some people are calling. What for? More interviews? More honors? No, Miss D, they want a statement from you. A statement about what? Miss D, your sister passed away. My sympathy. T. Thank you. Do you want to speak with them? No. Tell them I am shocked and saddened. Still first at the big things, sister dear.